Tonga Batu, the southerly island of the Tonga group, prepares to welcome Queen Elizabeth, who is journeying by flying boat from the Fiji Islands for a two-day visit. Sunshine floods the island as across the bay comes a launch, bringing Her Majesty to the island's capital, Nukualofa. Queen Salote Tubon, whose charm and dignity captured Britain's heart at coronation time, is first to greet the royal visitors. Her Majesty receives a bouquet from Queen Salote's granddaughter as the people's token of welcome. Queen Salote, who braved the rain during the coronation procession back to Buckingham Palace, joins our Queen in the shelter of an umbrella as rain sweeps in from the sea. But it's not long before the sun comes out again to brighten the joyous scene of welcome. Tongans, who formerly greeted visitors in silence, have now adopted cheering at the request of Queen Salote, who brought the idea back from Britain. And there's no doubt the idea sounds just fine to every Tongan on the island. So to the palace, where Her Majesty is to be Queen Salote's guest. A permanent guest is Tui Malila, a tortoise which, it is believed, was a present from Captain Cook to a Tongan chief about 170 years ago. Holding the rank of a high chieftain, Tui has a special apartment in the palace. Thousands of flying foxes are a feature of Tonga. Although they do great damage to crops, none is killed as they are taboo. If they should leave the island, it's believed it would indicate the death of a local chief. A superstitious people, the Tongans, but a hospitable, happy race, and rightly have their islands been called the Friendly Islands. To honor Queen Elizabeth, a sumptuous feast is held on the city green. More than a thousand guests are invited, but almost every islander has contributed to make this the greatest celebration of its kind ever held in Tonga. For the royal visitor's pleasure, 2,000 pigs and hundreds of chickens, lobsters, yams, fruits, turkey and fish have been prepared. At one of the three 150-yard long tables, the royal party sit cross-legged for the feast. The food is served on huge banana leaves and, as is the Tongan custom, eaten with the fingers. Daughters of some of the island's leading citizens wait upon the royal guests. Although the catering works out at about two pigs per head, the feast is soon ended. Then to complete the festivity comes the dancing. Some of the dances, which are known as laka lakas, have been specially composed in welcome to the Queen. Many are interpretations of nursery rhymes taught to Tongans by British missionaries. <laughs> Several casualties followed over strenuous rehearsals for the island's most exciting and vigorous war dance. Soon the royal visit to Tonga ends. Once more, Her Majesty and the Duke come aboard SS Gothic to continue their journey to the countries of the Commonwealth. Another launch brings back members of the crew, each bearing gifts from the people of the Friendly Islands. From the shore, children wave a last farewell. Members of the royal party cast garlands of flowers onto the sea, a Tongan custom that signifies their wish to return. On towards New Zealand heads the Royal Liner through cold, rainy weather.
The coastline is ahead. Out from shore hurry nearly 2,000 little craft to escort Gothic to Auckland Harbour. Guns sound a welcoming salute to the Queen, the first reigning sovereign ever to visit New Zealand. A naval guard of honour waits at the quayside as from the liner steps the Queen to be welcomed by the Governor-General, Sir Willoughby Norrie and Lady Norrie. Next to greet the Queen is Mr. Holland, the Prime Minister, and his wife. To hail the Queen, Maoris in their traditional costume perform a haka in front of the Town Hall in Auckland, an unplanned gesture of the affection they hold for their highest chieftain. At the Town Hall, on an open dais, the Queen stands in the rain to hear speeches of welcome. With true Elizabethan courtesy, the Deputy Mayor of Auckland, Mr. Keith Buttle, slips off his raincoat and hands it to Mr. Holland, who puts it about the Queen's shoulders. Thank you, Sir Walter Raleigh, says Her Majesty. Later, the weather improves and the grounds of Government House are crowded as 2,500 people gather for a garden party. The Queen, who wears a sleeveless dress of Shantung, walks out to meet the guests. In her Christmas message from Auckland, the Queen said that although she was parted from her children, she found herself completely and most happily at home in New Zealand.